I've been recording acoustic stringed instruments since the 70s, and I've tried every single miking technique that I've ever heard of, and I still use a lot of them, but over the years, I've kind of worked it down to a couple that I really like a lot. So on a recent trip to Nashville to record at Compass Recording Studios with Greenwood Rye, I filmed my session so that I could show you how I do this. I'm gonna show you the different mic setups, the different mics that I used, and how they blend together. Check it out. Take one. On the bass, the most important mic that I'm using is this Neumann M149. If for some reason I couldn't use other mics, this would be the mic that I would use in this position alone to capture the bass. Now the reason I like this mic is that it's high-end detail is just amazing and that's something I feel is often missing on stand-up bass is the detail. It gets lost, you just hear this boomy thing in the background. And I've got that run into this Millennia HVD3 Mic Pre. I've got the input gain down on that mic because it's very easy to overdrive this mic being that it's tube and it's very sensitive. Now the next thing I do on every acoustic stand-up bass I record is to record a DI off of their pickup on their bass that they're usually using live. Now these pickups don't usually sound that great compared to the microphones, but I found that since these acoustic basses are very inconsistent in their response, like different notes are gonna be louder on different parts of the bass and every single bass is completely different. You don't know what you're gonna get and often a pretty good pickup with a good DI will get sometimes a more consistent sub low end, like a really good low end down there, or sometimes there's gonna be better like punch like, like you know that 110 120 hertz that i want for the punch on a bass which is actually hard to get off an acoustic bass so i recorded this one using the tubeworks di the next thing i'll do is put a small diaphragm condenser high up on the neck like this now, I normally have it pointing more at the actual fingerboard, but on this bass, I did it like this. I like the sound better. The purpose of this mic is to pick up the buzz that you get off the strings and some of the noise up there that's very important to the bass. I used a Josephson C42 on this and ran it into the Millennia Mic Pre. And as usual, you gotta spend some time with the positioning of these mics to make sure that you're getting the phase or polarity correct between the two mics. Now, until recently, this was my standard setup for recording stand-up acoustic bass until somebody sent me some stuff to mix where they had added in this mic along with a U47 and a ribbon mic. This is the Nadine by Ear Trumpet Labs, and it's a microphone that's made primarily for live situations. So sometimes bass players will come in the studio and, and not even hook this thing up, but this project I'd gotten, they had used this mic. And when I first heard it, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't like the sound of it because it didn't have a whole lot of low end. It kind of had this like kind of low mid rangey sound and it was all right, but I found when I added it in with my front big mic like a M149 or I think they were using a, a U47 on this thing, it brought back that punch and that kind of like clarity of the lower mids that I've always been fighting for that I usually had to get off of a DI and this mic was just like, oh my God, let me just show you how I use this mic. So right here we've got the Neumann M149. No, it's a nice full conventional sound, sounds great. Here is the Nadine. You're kind of like, ah, it's not as full sounding, but when you blend them together, here they are together. That's the Neumann and the Nadine together. If I take that Nadine out, it's cool, but it doesn't have that punch. That Nadine gives it in there. It's like just that Nadine's just amazing. Here it is without it. Now with it. Now, this is how I would normally use the DI. Here's the DI. Pretty terrible sounding, but it's got a good attack on it. So if I've got the uh, DI mixed in with the Neumann M149, here's, here's the M149 by itself. Now I'm gonna put that DI in. It does give it a lot of attack. I will still use DIs if I don't have the Nadine, but that Nadine, it gives it that punch, but you get that nice finger sound in there as well. The other thing that I mic'd up, and I'll show you real quick, is the Josephson for that string noise up there. I don't know if I really need it, 
because I've already got good high end off the Neumann. Plus there's a lot of banjo bleed through on this mic as you can hear right there. Uh, before we move on, I just wanted to say something here, and that is, even though I'm showing you the different mics I'm using and the mic pre's and EQ and all that, that's not what this video is about. In fact, some of these microphones and mic pre's I've never used before in my life. What this video is about is about the miking techniques, which can be replicated with any half-decent microphones, mic pre's, and compressors. So don't get hung up on the particular mics that I'm using. What's important here is the miking techniques. Anyway, back to the video. On the banjo, I used a Coles 4038 on the head. And then up on the neck, I used a Gefell UMT-70. Now, I normally use a small diaphragm condenser up on the neck, but I thought Gefell sound pretty good. I thought I'd give it a shot on this project. I had both of those mics run into the Millennium Mic Pre, and then I had both of them run into distressor compressors at a 4 to 1 ratio, just barely hitting it. And this is what they sound like blended together. Here is the Coles Ribbon Mic. And here's the Gefell, which is up on the neck. Together. Here's the Coles without the Gefell. Let me bring in that high end. Ribbon only. It fell back in. And that's actually a little bit higher than I would actually do in a mix. It's just to show it off. I would probably actually have it somewhere down here. It's very subtle, but it just adds that air to the top end of the banjo. One thing to remember when you're doing multi mics on acoustic instruments is that the player needs to sit pretty still. They don't need to be moving around too much because it'll change the phase relation between the microphones. So I actually put tape on the floor where the legs for the chair sit and on the bass I had a little teeny square of tape. Like always put your bass peg on the bottom of the bass right there. I also make sure the mic stands are tightened down really good and I put weights on the legs so that the mic stands don't move. On the acoustic guitar I used a three microphone technique. On the middle mic I used an Audio-Technica 4050 large diaphragm condenser. I ran that into an API 3124 Plus mic pre, followed by a Mag EQ4 to pull out a small bit of low end that I often get when I'm micing a guitar this closely. And then into a TubeTech CL1B tube compressor, just barely hitting it. On the space pair microphones, I use a pair of Universal Audio SP1s, which are clones of the Neumann Cam 184s. Now, normally I use large diaphragm condenser microphones for the space pair, but in that small booth, they just sounded kind of weird, and these mics actually did a really great job. I ran those microphones into some Brent Avril Neve 1272 mic pre's, and then into a pair of distressors at a 4 to 1 ratio, just barely hitting them. And here's what the three of them sound like together. This is the center mic. Sounds cool. Now here's the side mics. And here's the side mics by themselves. Weird, right? But just opens it up. Now, I'd probably actually have it a little quieter than that. I'd probably have it down around here. Here it is without them. Now in. And you can still pan the center mic around quite a bit. Got it over here to the right, and turn them off, and back on. You still get that panning, but you also get the space. It's just a nice three-dimensional sound. Now, once again, you're gonna have to make sure that the phase between all the mics is correct. First off, by listening to the mics while the guitar is being played and switching the polarity button and moving the mics a little bit, or even looking at the waveforms that were recorded into your DAW. And then, once you got the two space pairs sounding good together, you make sure that they're in phase with the front center mic, doing the same thing, just listening, moving that mic forward or backward, looking at the waveform. Now, if you want more detail and options on using this three mic technique, 
check out my video, How to Record Guitar with Three Microphones. Mandolin miking. Billy, I'm nervous. Don't make me. I know. On the mandolin, I've got two mics set side by side. I've got a Shure SM57, which is actually what I typically mic mandolins with, or I use another type of dynamic microphone. And next to that, I've got another one of these Gefell UMT-70s. The reason I did it like this is just in case I want something with kind of a, a nicer, more luxurious or, uh, you know, sophisticated top end on it, I've got the Gefell, but normally I like the mandolin to be kind of chunky and aggressive sounding, which is why I use dynamic mics. The SM57, I've got run into another one of these Millennia mic pre's, and that goes into a DBX160 compressor, and the Gefell is going into an API 3124, and then into a Spectrasonics 610 limiter compressor. On the Dobro, and I apologize for the filming here, I couldn't get a good shot with the low light in the booth and the reflection off the glass, but I have two microphones. What's interesting about this is I normally use a Royer 121 over the main body of the Dobro, and I did, and I just didn't like the sound of it, so I tried this cheaper Cascade Fathead ribbon mic, and it, it actually sounded really good. And then over the neck, that is a Josephson C42, which is like a Neumann KM184. And the position of the mics is very similar to what I did on the banjo. Once again, I had to spend a good deal of time moving them around to get the phase between the mics just right. I've got both of those run into a pair of my Capi VP28 mic pre's. Here's the Josephson by itself. And the Cascade Ribbon Mic. And then together. Ribbon Mic by itself. And the Josephson. I mean, I probably have it a little quieter than that, but you can see how it adds a nice top end to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that it helps your recording project. But before I go, I just want to say one thing, and that is, I'm sure some of you have noticed that I haven't been putting out as many videos lately. I've actually been filming a lot. I've built up a lot of content, but I've just been working on a lot of projects. I've been traveling. I've joined a band. But probably the main thing is the appliance apocalypse. My garbage disposal broke, a washer stove and two refrigerators broke, we've had multiple water leaks, all the kitchen sink stuff needed to be replaced, multiple water faucets replaced, the water heater died and I replaced it with one that somebody had given us and then it went ahead and died. So to hell with tanks, I'll install a tankless water heater which altogether meant almost two weeks without hot water. And I know this isn't really an appliance necessarily, but the well pump to my guest house went out, so I said the hell with well pumps, I'll install a water line, which meant digging a 200 foot long trench, drilling holes in foundations, I had a blown engine in my van, and somebody wrecked my electric car. So I've been without cars off and on over the last couple months, so I've just been going through a lot of stuff, but rest assured, I'm hopefully getting back into it now, and hopefully the appliance apocalypse is over. We'll see. But anyway, you have a good day and remember, always be unique.